Okay, uh, so I'm here to talk a little bit about using measures with young people and what we've learnt uh, over the years, having conversations with young people about what they find helpful or unhelpful. Um, uh, uh, there's two names here. She's not just very small, she just couldn't make it today, unfortunately. Amy is one of the young advisors from Common Room who co wrote the presentation with me but had to send her apologies. So I also send my apologies for you just having to put up with me. Um, but we're from Common Room. Uh, we are a small consultancy and promote collaborative practice with children, young people, adults across uh, uh, disability uh, and mental health. So everything we do is about helping people learn from each other, so the expertise of children, young people, patients, uh, and all the expertise of clinicians and services can bring. So just a little bit of context. Um, uh, you'll know a lot of this, and you'll know probably an awful lot more than what I'm going to tell you today. You're out there using these measures all the time with children and young people. So all the examples I'm going to give, I'm sure you can think of several more. Uh, but I think it's just helpful to hear uh, what differences can make. Um, so young people often report that they don't feel involved in decision making about their mental health care, um, but, but want to be. They want to particularly uh, talk quite passionately about uh, being involved in the analytical stages of decision making. So uh, weighing up options, what's going to work for me, what are the benefits and risks. So really want to kind of collaborate and work and learn from uh, 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 clinicians expertise about what's on offer and what can help them. Um, we know that collabor collaborative practice can improve young people's feeling like they, this is right for them, that what's an offer is going to work for them, it feels theirs. Um, uh, and it can increase their safety. So a lot of young people talk about how uh, the more they learn about what's going on for them, what to look out for, the more they can look after themselves as well. Uh, but does that mean that you know, if they don't feel involved in decision making, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're not intending to engage children and young people. There's a, a lot of literature shows there's a real gap between what people intend and think and believe uh, and perhaps what people receive or expect to receive. Uh, so I truly believe, uh, and what a lot of the literature shows, is that we, uh, most clinicians believe in collaborative practice. They want to engage people, they are passionate uh, about, we're here to do the right thing for children and young people. But how do children and young people know that? Uh, and I think that's where the gap is, and I think this is where some of the measures could be particularly helpful. How do we communicate what's in here to, what, to the person in front of us? So why is there a bit of a gap? Uh, kind of, can you read those? So children and young people aren't commonly used to being asked for their uh, opinions and expertise. Uh, as what this one says, uh, uh, I expect you to all to be independent, innovative, critical think thinkers who will do exactly as I say. Uh, and in terms of patience, uh, when we want your opinion, we'll give it to you. So there's a lot of kind of uh, 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 messages that children and young people receive that they're bringing into the room uh, when they're meeting with, with workers. You can be the most engaging, interested a uh, collaborative practitioner going, but how does that child or young person know that if they're not used to being listened to, they're not used to being asked for their opinion or their opinion being uh, uh, valued? So how can they help? Uh, so as Duncan alluded to before, there's the kind of the different questions that, re that outcome measures can help, help us answer together. So how do we really make sure that we're all on the same page and making shared decisions? Uh, so how can the forms and outcome uh, tools help us uh, uh, understand what the problems are for the young person's perspective? Lots of young people say that when they're referred into CAMS, uh, it's not, uh, it's, they've not been referred necessarily for issues that they, they would identify as being the main issues. So how do we make sure we're on the same page and we, we uh, uh, make sure there's a shared understanding about what they're here for, what they want to change, what their goals are? How can we help make sure there's uh, options? How can we use the outcome measures to understand what options are available to young people? How can we help uh, review what's going on, keep track of progress, both in terms of how they're doing but also in terms of the relationship. How are we working together? How can we personalise what it is we're doing together? So the forms and tools in and of themselves won't magically answer all these questions, but they can help us. They can help us have better conversations, help us elicit new information, uh, uh, and have more open and frank discussions. So what do young people tell us? Well, <coughs> young people talk a lot about how some of the tools and outcome measures can help close the communication gap. So how do we... Uh, 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 it can make sure there's access to the same information. If you've got things on the table in front of you and you're looking at the same piece of information, it's quite clear that you're both on the same page. Uh, young people talk about that being quite balancing, that often when they uh, experience CAMS or experience many services, it's the professional that holds the information, it's the professional that has access to the computer system, to the paperwork, etc. By having forms and tools uh, shared between you, it's kind of a bit more of a balancing act. You both have access to the same information. You're both learning together. Um, so they can make what you're doing together explicit. Uh, uh, having it, again, having it recorded down, the simple act of having it on a piece of paper uh, between you can make it explicit that you're both on the same page. Young people often say, I know you've understood me. So as one young person said, sometimes it's easier to have things on paper or written down. 
it makes things explicit between you and can be easier than trying to weave something into a conversation. If you're just talking about something, it's hard to know what you are or aren't allowed to say or what they've understood. So it can just make things a bit more tangible. Uh, it can bring things down uh, and help communicate things and bridge this communication gap. Uh, young people also say it can really help them to express things that perhaps they would have found it difficult to say otherwise. Um, when young, several young people have said to me, uh, by seeing a form of words on a piece of paper about certain feelings, it's helped them to realise they're not the only one. It can help them express things perhaps sooner uh, than they would have otherwise felt able to. They often say that, you know, walking all these feelings can feel huge. Uh, they feel really difficult and they'll be quite frightened about talking to them about somebody in case they, you know, God, they, are they, are they, they feel so bad to me. Maybe you'll think I'm crazy. Maybe you'll think I'm really mad. That They're so bad to me. What will you think? So to have forms of words on a piece of paper, they can go, oh, my God, that's me. That's how I feel. It can be incredibly normalising and help people express things in a different way. It can also put forms of words of things that perhaps people have found difficult to express. The some of the physical feelings uh, uh, can really help young people say, that's me, that's, that's how I've been feeling. How did you know? So as one young person said, the first time I did a measure on depression, it's got a question in it like, something like, do you cry? It had answers like, sometimes, a lot, all the time. I feel like I want to cry but can't. It made me realise that feeling like I wanted to cry but couldn't was a valid way to feel, that it didn't mean I wasn't depressed. So they can be acknowledging, they can help aid that conversation that you may well have had anyway, but that, that's another way of communicating and making sure you're on the same page. And progress, I think, is really important to, uh, to young people. This is one of my favourite quotes. So it's, uh, it's like losing weight. It can be so gradual, it can feel like nothing is changing. It's good to have something to help see what's changed, how far I've come. So to see from time one right to the end, to see, actually, I know I have come a long way. But week by week, day by day, things might not seem that much different. But when you look back to where you started from, you can really realise just how much has changed for me. Another young person said, actually in her early 20s now, but said, I kept all my papers from when I was first in CAMS. I sometimes look back when I feel like I haven't made any prog progress and I can see that I really have. So again, it's a reminder, it's, a, it's distance travelled. What difference, uh, 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 how far have I come? And feedback can really personalise that support. This isn't to say that uh, uh, the support offered isn't of a high quality. It isn't to say that, uh, that CAMS aren't providing a excellent services to children and young people. But we can't know what's, what people's personal preferences are. How do we adapt what we do to the individual preferences of the person sat in the room? Um, uh, I often use an example um, uh, that uh, some of you all have heard this before. I apologise. Um, uh, my brother uh, uses adult services, but nonetheless, he um, uh, said that for weeks and weeks, uh, he felt like his uh, uh, psychologist wasn't listening to him. She wasn't really interested in what he was saying. And when we talked about why, he said, well, she's always looking at the clock. Or every five minutes, always looks at the clock above my head. And I was like, well, have you, have you spoken to her about this? Have you asked what that's about? Why? And so he did. And she went, oh, well, I was just keeping track of time. I want to make sure that we cover everything. And he was like, well, that makes me feel like you don't listen. So they agreed they'd just put a clock in between them. And that one simple little change changed how he felt about the whole time. And that's what uh, uh, I think sometimes the feedback can really bring out is the small little changes that make what you provide feel even better, feel right for the person in the room. Uh, so another young person says, uh, I used to get really upset in CPA meetings. When I got an advocate, I started to take fiddle toys with me. Have you seen those, the little things you just sit and mess around with? Yep. Um, and made everyone play with them, so everyone was doing something else at the same time. It just made it less scary a room to walk into, to knowing there was something, just that little thing made such a difference for somebody. when can they be unhelpful? Uh, it's not to say that they're just, you know, forms and tools are always going to be helpful to everyone all of the time. I think the main message I get back is how they're used. If they're used with the intention of having a good conversation about learning together, about being on the same page, then they can be incredibly helpful. Um, however, they can just be another piece of paper. Um, if there's no clarity about why they're being used or how they can help, there's a bit of uncertainty, it's not that clear conversation. There's different expectations about what they're for. Um, uh, uh, or no meaningful conversation about them. So young people often say, uh, 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 well, I filled in this form, but then I, I never saw it again. I don't, I don't know what that was for. And they were hoping, perhaps, that there was going to be something more from that. But the, uh, when they don't know where it's going, uh, um, that can be quite difficult. Um, they also the, the tool doesn't feel the right fit for the young person. So perhaps well, they haven't had the choice about what works for them and why. And which tool is going to feel relevant for me? When are we going to complete it? How are we going to complete it together? Um, and there's no choice about which ones are used or, or how to use them. So some people have said, I find it hard to say how I feel. It takes me a while. 
Um, I hate the scale one to nine thing. I like the ones with words. Uh, but repeatedly asked to do, on a scale of one to nine, how do you feel? And they're all like, mm. I just put five every week because, well, I didn't like it and I didn't know what to say. So, you know, we have to find ones that use, that work for people. Other young people love the scales one to nine. It's, it's about adapting it to what people like. The young person said it's like ticking boxes rather than like help, like their criteria numbers, like their number thing. It's just so rigid. So they didn't feel, even within those tools, they had a particular choice about how they were used or how they were going to be useful. So, again, key messages. Um, I guess it's the spirit in which they're used that's the most important. Um, uh, I said before about having different expectations. Um, I think it's really important to say that we don't always have to feed back uh, outcome, the, the results of a form or what, uh, uh, to a young person if that's been explicitly agreed. So if you're just using a, a form for service evaluation, I think that's fine as long as that young person knows why they're being asked to complete it and they fill it out on that basis. So if you say something like, um, this is to help us learn as a service. We won't look at it together, but it could help the service to learn what we're good at, where we need to get better. That's just being honest. It's the young person has a real choice there. Young people also talk about learning and working together. So uh, at the moment, I'm doing a piece of work with my doctor in CAMS, and it's learning for both of us. This is a piece of work that hasn't been done much before, and she's only done it once or twice. We're both learning from each other, but that's better. So, I know there's often a lot of anxiety about what if I say it and they choose the wrong thing? What if I don't have an answer to a question they've got to ask? That's all right. It's quite balancing. And I think it's about an honesty there that young people don't expect people to know everything and have all the answers to everything. It's quite nice being able to learn together about these things. So I said, it's about learning together about what works. It's okay not to be an expert in all of the measures. If you don't know something, just say. So say, do you know what? I need to go and check this out with somebody else. Uh, it's good. It shows you're human and that we're learning together. Uh, and to remember that we can learn from young people about the measures too. Um, I was talking to one of our young advisors who was saying for weeks she was fretting about how to sensitively tell uh, her clinician that she was doing the measurement wrong. And she was like, um, Jennifer, it says naught to wait there, but I don't think it can be 12. Uh, so for weeks she'd been fretting too about uh, how to feedback. Um, uh, and I think uh, uh, as we get more expert, as we get more uh, uh, used to using these measures, so will young people. We can learn a lot from them about their usage as well. Um, we could have talked all day about that. Uh, uh, there's some of the key messages. The message I hear time and time again from young people. I'm sure you've got many more. Uh, I think the thing to say is, as you said, just ask. I think that's the main message we get from young people all of the time, is uh, not to feel like you have to expect to know all the answers, the best way to use them, uh, uh, just to ask. They'll, they'll certainly help figure out the answers. So thank you very much. <laughs>